four research work for the patent. He also published four books and also worked as a book editor. Uh, Professor Delicasa is a member of American Chemical Society. He also member of the Senate and member of Academic Council. Also work as a member of BOS, and uh, he also work as a member annual member of International Solar Energy Society. Uh, sir has provided his contribution to the students and home institute by working as a coordinator for uh, uh, coordinator for university industry interaction cell. Uh, coordinator for research polygon and uh, chairman for MSc examination and placement works. So, with this brief introduction, uh, once again, I will come and uh, thank you for giving me this chance. Over to you, ma'am. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Now, I kindly request to Professor uh, Dr. Deleka, sir, to continue our event by sharing some word with us. Very good morning to all of you. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, just I am sharing my screen. Does it visible? No. Yes, Hello? sir. Yes, huh? sir. Yes. Okay. So first of all, I am very much thankful to the organizers for giving me the opportunity uh, to talk uh, on the re revised syllabus. So especially, uh, uh, I am thankful to the principal, uh, B.T. Zadav, sir. Uh, head of the commerce department, uh, Pratap Bhise, sir. And then uh, BO chairman, Savan madam, uh, MSE coordinator, and uh, who also introduced about the faculty development program, Chavan, sir. And then uh, <clears throat> uh, the Kokati, sir, okay, he introduced about me and all other okay, faculty colleagues. Okay. So okay, at the same time, okay, I am also appreciating to all the uh, the members or uh, the organizers for organizing such a uh, nice event, a uh, faculty development program, uh, especially on the uh, revised syllabus of MSc one semester one. Okay, because uh, as we know, you know that uh, okay the uh, the content of the syllabus it is playing very important role for the the student development uh, not only that was once the content is framed and uh, chavan sir told about how the content has been framed uh, initially uh, they were conducted uh, sub meetings uh, subcommittee meetings of uh, different experts and later on uh, what were the inputs from the subcommittee members as well as the BOS members at the end, uh, they uh, uh, framed the overall syllabus for MSc uh, degree course, no doubt. So uh, uh, as a BOS member of KMST, uh, Yashantra uh, Chawan Institute of Science, uh, I also attended one or two uh, BOS meetings, no doubt. So okay, uh, through okay, BOS, uh, we have framed the syllabus but uh, after framing syllabus uh, delivery is also very important how you are going to deliver and for that uh, the 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 one of the important stakeholder is the, the teacher uh, if teacher have very good uh, okay, expertise or very good knowledge or very good okay, uh, the skills then definitely uh, uh, he or she uh, would uh, deliver the the content very smoothly or very systematically so because of okay uh, the same, uh, these faculty development programs are very important, no doubt. So definitely through uh, these uh, programs, uh, faculty can aware about the what are the changes in the, uh, the syllabus, new syllabus, uh, in comparison to the earlier one. Then uh, whether the syllabus is upgraded uh, with respect to the present state of art or not, 
okay so definitely okay, along with that the uh, the faculty members also aware about uh, in what depth we have to cover the point so uh, about the teaching our curriculum aspects the definitely the faculty members can learn the many things okay through such a okay, the programs okay so uh, <clears throat> so this is okay uh, just okay uh, one minute it is not So once again, I am thankful to all all of you for giving me opportunity. Uh, so already okay, uh, I am going to cover my talk in two parts. Okay, uh, uh, first regarding the about faculty development program, and just now I highlighted few things about the faculty development program. Why this program is very important. And second, okay, I am going to highlight few of the okay the topics from inorganic and physical chemistry. And uh, also, I am also focusing on uh, the, their practicals of semester one only. Okay, actually, basically, I am inorganic chemist. Uh, but actually, Chawan sir called to me, sir, does it possible uh, to cover few of the topics uh, from physical? Uh, then, as we know that, uh, <clears throat> okay, the uh, definitely the preliminary knowledge of the physical chemistry is to be covered. But okay, if you want to go for depth. It is a difficult task to me. So, uh, in today's okay talk, uh, though uh, the organizers have given the uh, have okay, allotted the two things, okay, means few topics from inorganic and few from physical. But okay, today's okay in today's talk, I am restricted only to inorganic part. And uh, if you have okay um, the difficulty uh, uh, or constraints. The various topic or units of physical chemistry, you may uh, contact uh, okay, the the expert okay, experts from the other universities or from Shivaji, like okay, Professor G S Gokavi sir, he's one of the expert. And then uh, you know then Doctor okay, uh, Professor Dilip Dagade, then uh, okay, Professor G B Kolekar, Professor K M Garadkar, and okay, uh, if possible, you can take from the others like Pune University and the bamboo like that okay so <clears throat> so okay here uh, as we know that uh, <clears throat> you are aware about the okay overall okay the core structure uh, i am not going to discuss about the the core structure for your msc degree course but uh, right now okay we know that uh, <clears throat> earlier uh, means in classical okay way uh, whatever the teacher delivering that is to be uh, grabbed by the students but right now uh, if you are going to see here uh, your syllabus okay, it is choice based credit system uh, cbcs okay and in that system uh, the okay instead of okay uh, teacher centric uh, the student centric uh, the curriculum is very important the, as per the, uh, the demand from the students or as per the needs from the student who want to uh, uh, cover the the curriculum, and so uh, in this uh, okay, and that that okay because of the same uh, okay this okay today's uh, um, if you are going to see the uh, the syllabus of the, okay almost okay uh, uh, syllabus of different subjects uh, throughout the universities then uh, okay it is a choice based credit system and it is also. Uh, called as the outcome of okay, a base learning and so because of that whenever we are framing the syllabus we want to define the objective initially and uh, means what should be the uh, learning objects means uh, what are the things to be uh, getting uh, from the uh, the uh, particular uh, the paper so if you are going to see okay the lear learning objects for uh, the arm um, okay paper mct 101 in organic chemistry so okay, these are, okay, the, you know that there are four units. Okay, unit number first is reserved for chemistry of transition elements. So student can aware about okay the chemistry of transition element and not only that, all other okay, aspects like uh, coordination chemistry, then stereo chemistry, then about crystal filtering and all these. Okay, so these are the okay, various uh, okay learning objects. So in organometallic, okay, okay uh, there is need to introduce about. The different organometallic compounds and the chemistry in this also student can aware about uh sorry 
metal ligand equilibrium okay in solution then student also know about the nano science and nano metal so uh, i am really uh, appreciate all the bos member okay who put uh, this okay nano science and okay, technology in msc uh, the course semester okay one usually in most of the universities especially uh, it is in either in third semester or in the fourth semester like that okay uh, 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 in group 3 also they put into a second semester so because you know that this nano science and nano metals uh, uh, you know that these are very uh, uh, okay emerging metal most of the uh, the scientists throughout the globe working on this field and so that's why again the uh, the yc uh, instructs science satara okay has uh, introduced this one of the important topic in msc degree course so these are the learning objects so then okay chemistry of okay the transition element in, in, okay, unit number one so uh, already we know that okay uh, the participants are the teacher uh, so uh, okay they are aware about okay the general okay uh, the characteristics and properties of transition element so you know that uh, i'm just highlighting uh, then okay you know that okay almost all transition elements are uh, are metal okay and if all are metal then definitely obviously the metallic properties are definitely associated with the the transition metals so uh, they have uh, uh, metallic luster in nature malleable ductile uh, so okay these are okay, different okay, okay metallic okay properties or not only that they can conduct okay uh, the yeah, miss, they can conduct heat and electricity uh, so these are metallic properties and then one of the important okay property of the transition element is that uh, they have variable oxidation state if you are going to see uh, the the electronic configuration based on the electronic configuration one can obtain a different uh, the uh, the the oxidation state for the individual metal ion and this is one of the the beauty of uh, the transition elements in comparison to either okay, s block elements or p block elements or the especially f block elements no doubt and because of the same because of variable oxidation state these are the k to be used uh, for forming the various types of complexes and okay once we okay we are how we once we have the complexes one can use these diff complexes for different purposes one can use for for different the applications so okay uh, just now i told because of variable oxidation state the another important property is that they form the different types of complexes with uh, neutral or the the anionic okay, ligand most of the time okay and uh, another important property is that uh, <clears throat> important property of transition element is that once the complexes are formed most of the complexes are the colored so okay these are the k means regarding metallic okay, uh, the properties then electronic configuration variable oxidation state forming complexes then uh, uh, okay once the complexes are formed almost these are colored so all these are okay, aspects uh, uh, have to be covered uh, in, okay under this uh, the the point then uh, coordination chemistry of the transition uh, metal ions so you know that the coordination chemistry uh, is the the heart of inorganic chemistry okay and in coordination chemistry uh, we are learning uh, this whole coordination chemistry is based on the warner's theory warner's theory okay so okay, okay. according to the the warner uh, what is the metal ion uh, means okay transition metal ion okay is surrounded by the ligands and uh, the okay, the nature of bonding between metal and ligand is usually coordinate covalent bond so okay metal is surrounded by the ligands through uh, coordinate covalent bond between metal and the donor atom of the ligand no doubt then okay or in another words one can say that uh, if you are going to see the uh, the coordination complex the coordination complex okay is usually combination of the Lewis acid and Lewis base. Lewis acid. Lewis acid means okay, you know that it is electron uh, pair okay, acceptor. And uh, base means electron pair donor. So metal ligand, usually you know that ligand is donating electron to the metal ion. So ligand is the, the base 
and the metal is accepting the electron it so that's why in coordination uh, the complexes coordination complexes is usually uh, the combination of the lewis acid and the lewis base and uh, according to this warner theory so uh, just okay you want to explain about the uh, each and every complex has okay two valencies one is primary valency and second is secondary valency or okay there is um, primary sphere it is also called as outer sphere or second is secondary sphere it is also called as uh, the inner sphere no doubt and uh, yeah. the outer sphere or primary valency reveal about the, the oxidation state oxidation state no doubt and uh, secondary or inner sphere revealing about the the coordination number of the central metal ion so uh, these are the points that get to be covered under uh, coordination chemistry of the transition metal ions then okay in stereochemistry of the coordination compounds uh, here okay you want to co cover about two important uh, the isomerism one is geometrical and another is the optical isomerism so okay the in uh, geometrical it is also called a cistans isomer so position of the the ligands with respect to each other uh, revealing okay whether the isomer is cis or trans and in case of optical isomerism uh, here we know that uh, 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 you want to use the concept of the symmetry means uh, a okay, complex okay is uh, to be said as a symmetric complex when uh, there is no any uh, the symmetry element symmetry element x of symmetry or plane of symmetry center of symmetry or uh, improper x of uh, uh, symmetry or okay, identity is common so out of four elements if uh, no one is present in the complex uh, the complex is said to be asymmetric molecule and these asymmetric complexes are the optically active one so with the help, with the help of the concept of the symmetry one can travel about the uh, the optical isomerism no doubt no. and optically active uh, complex means which can rotate the plane of plane polarized light no doubt no. so then okay in crystal field theory so if you are going to see the bonding okay means different theories in coordination complexes pbt okay cft and uh, mot these are the uh, three major theories but in our syllabus this okay uh, crystal field field theory for tetrahedral octahedral square okay pyramidal square pyramidal complexes uh, okay is included so uh, okay one of the okay if you are going to see the uh, you know that crystal field theory is uh, the theory deals with the splitting of d orbital okay d orbital and you know that okay there are five d orbitals and uh, these five d orbitals uh, have been grouped into two sets one is t2z another is the ez okay t2z t2z and ez or in tetrahedral one can develop like it simply t2 or e then why again okay, the uh, symbol has been used t2z why the symbol okay easy okay used for dx square minus y square and dz square so all these symbols have been originated from the group theory okay and these are okay uh, these are uh, these are uh, mulican symbolism okay these are mulican symbolism so you know that uh, if you are going to see the crystal field splitting of d orbital in tetrahedral field we are okay use simply using t2 we are omitting z or in sub z one okay we are using t2 u u okay means we are omitting z or one can use u when the molecule is tetrahedral because you know that uh, okay if molecule or a complex is tetrahedral have tetrahedral geometry these are non okay non centro symmetric if there is no any center of symmetry in a molecule then one can use u or one can omit z but in octahedral way we are using t2 z or ez revealing that all octahedral complexes are centro symmetric then why okay the symbol is is okay use e or t2 so for that you want to go through the the molecular okay symbolism and it is part of the group theory it is very uh, the simple why okay why not a there are different symbols a then e then uh, okay there is like a single prime there is double prime 
but the key okay do there are different symbols but all these are uh, related to the the concept of the symmetry no doubt so here okay this is okay uh, uh, this is okay the basic about the regarding writing the symbols involved in the crystal field theory second thing is okay uh, if you are going to see uh, the uh, one of the recent book okay published by uh, uh, ak das and m das fundamental concepts of inorganic chemistry and the ak das and m das uh, have published this book in 2000 okay the 13 so uh, uh, it might be uh, fifth or okay sixth okay edition but in this okay recent edition uh, they have uh, um, highlighted about the okay this this way okay, came this will feel like okay, a stabilization energy and uh, okay uh, in our okay, earlier okay uh, uh, means uh, means in our okay regular or earlier practices uh if you are going to see the crystal field splitting of uh, the d orbital in octahedral field so you know that <coughs> d orbital is going to split into okay two states okay d 2z and another is ez no doubt so uh, and with this to the barry center uh, with this to the barry center the e 2z uh, uh this say having minus 4 uh dq okay means these are okay stabilized by minus 4 dq and uh, what is the uh, easy set is to be destabilized by 6 dq uh, so this is okay our okay our regular or earlier practices but okay nowadays okay uh, what is the book published by ak and m das uh, they have considered the uh, here okay the splitting of d orbital into okay t2z set and ez and the same splitting is same but instead of minus 4 dq they have considered 4 dq 4 dq uh, they have not used okay minus but the okay, k minus okay means earlier okay plus 6 dq it is considered as okay minus 6 dq so it is also one of the okay, the uh, the uh, the major change okay if we are going to see the crystal field stabilization okay energy calculation no doubt but at the end okay means okay in earlier okay or in, or in earlier practice we are considering minus 4 dq for t2z okay set and okay plus 6 dq for the ez but the okay, if one of the, okay in one of this okay recent okay book it is okay shown like that okay plus 4 dq uh and the minus 6 dq okay why this plus they have used because okay the uh, energy is decrease if you compare the energy of the t2z set in comparison to the uh, uh, the parry center uh, the energy is okay okay decrease and if energy is decrease uh, it okay the in one in another words one can say that the stability is also okay uh, increase and because of that they have considered the plus 4 dq and uh, okay for easy set with respect to the parry center the energy is somewhat higher that's why they have considered the uh, the negative 6 dq but either okay either okay positive or negative you just consider the magnitude either 4 or 6 dq but okay if you are going to see consider the sign either you can use the same sign okay minus plus or plus minus if you are using okay minus okay plus or uh, plus minus at the end okay it is somewhat okay uh, Okay, during calculation of CAPC, at the end you are getting the same magnitude for okay uh, the CAPC value for different configurations, different configuration. Okay, means okay for let us say D1 configuration of tidal. Yeah, okay. As per the earlier okay um, uh, the uh, the practices having okay CAPC value is minus 4 dq. But okay, if you are going to see okay this new practices, okay, it would be. Uh, Plus a okay, four dq, either minus or okay plus four dq. Then so this is one okay one of the uh, change uh, you okay may aware about that okay, you okay, you may use this one uh, this okay plus and minus okay this this new practices instead of the the older practices one. Then uh, factors affecting the crystal field okay parameters. So in this okay you want to cover also the different okay the factors. So especially. Uh, the nature of metal ion, the nature of ligand, 
then uh, the geometry of the, the complexes. So these are the okay, three uh, sub factors you want to cover uh, under the factors affecting the uh, the crystal field okay the parameters then uh, okay in spectrochemical series okay as we know that the ligands okay are to be arranged as per their increasing uh, uh, the cfsc value uh, so that series is called as okay, spectrochemical series then okay there is okay giant Teller distortion so if, if the system is non-linear then definitely having the very okay having the more distortion so if you are going to see a okay, symmetrical filling in either T2Z or T2Z and EZ, uh, then okay, in such cases, there is no any, I mean, there is little distortion. Okay. But if there is uh, much more uh, non-linearity, -linear it means, okay, for example, D4 case, D4 in uh, the high spin. Okay. So uh, if you are going to see, uh, D4 in high spin with octahedral okay, fill, octahedral geometry, then uh, T2Z thrice, the configuration become T2Z thrice EZ1. So, so this overall is like a non-linear or non-symmetrical one or unsymmetrical one. So D4, if you are going to see D4 high spin octahedral okay, geometry, and if you are comparing the same with the D3, uh, the high spin octahedral okay, and the fill, the D4 having the, the more distortion. So it is to be uh, uh, justified with the help of the John Taylor the effect. Then okay, interpretation of electronic spectra including DD and okay, charge okay, transfer spectra. So in the, okay, if you want to interpret the electronic spectra, okay, so these are the okay, two basic okay, aspects. One can use okay, DD the transition or one can use okay, the charge okay, transfer okay, transition because uh, okay for okay uh, in depth okay interpreting uh, the electronic spectra uh, or spectrum of any spectrum of any complexes you want to aware about the uh, <coughs> organ diagram you might be knowing about okay correlation diagram you might be knowing about an abelian diagram but here okay uh, uh, usually the interpretation of electronic spectra okay it is uh, usually included in in the uh, core in organic okay chemistry okay because uh, want to learn okay many things okay and then and then definitely we are going to interpret the electronic okay, spectra so interpretation of electronic spectra is how many transitions electronic transitions are possible okay why the okay two transitions why two transitions why one transition is sometimes usually if you are going to see organ diagram in organ diagram okay okay uh, uh, for D1, D4, D9, and D6 case, okay, in all these cases or in all these conditions, there is only one, okay, band. But okay, D2, D3, D7, D8 configuration, uh, most of the times either two or three bands are possible. So why these okay two bands? Why there is one band? Why three bands? So all these okay, not only that okay, why add okay specific the uh, the wave number or energy? So all such okay information uh, are to be covered under the in interpretation of electronic spectra. But okay, it is not possible to cover only uh, through DD the transition or okay charge okay transfer okay, spectra. But just okay, you focus on DD transition. Basically, you know that DD transition is Laporte forbidden. One minute. Huh? Okay, sorry. So, okay, in this, okay, DD transition, you know that, uh, okay, basically it is uh, elaborate forbidden, but uh, okay, to okay, some extent it is uh, uh, allowed this, okay, because of uh, <clears throat> distortion in the symmetry and because of the vibronic coupling. And regarding charge, okay, uh, transfer, okay, uh, the spectrum, uh, 
you know that uh, why came four K two C R two O seven are colored. So you know to uh, reveal uh, the color chemistry of uh, the the cases or configuration in which there is if there is no any electron means if I'm going to use K two C R two O seven. The uh, in K two C potassium dichromate chromium is in plus six oxidation state. And if you are going to see the configuration, D zero case. Same in case of MnO four, KnO four, plus seven oxidation state. Mn is in zero oxidation state. Okay, no sorry, uh, plus seven and D zero configuration. So both have D zero uh, the configuration. So theoretically, these okay to be these to be okay the colorless, but actually they are okay showing the color. So because of okay charge okay transfer spectra. So in this just okay you highlight about the two types. Charge transfer means transfer of the charge from one species to the another species of a okay complex. No doubt. So especially there are two types: uh, LMCT and another is the LMCT means ligand to metal charge transfer. Name itself reveals that the charge is to be transferred from ligand to the metal ion. Okay, and in MLCT the charge is to be transferred from uh, the metal to ligand, no doubt. But the LMCT is very common. So in in case of KNO4, K2Cr2O7, uh, LMCT uh, is the uh, the correct okay, justification for revealing the color chemistry of KNO4 and K2Cr2O7. So now what are the outcomes? At the end, okay, students uh, have okay the knowledge with okay with respect to the chemistry of transition uh, elements. Uh, for different okay the coordination compounds they are aware about okay especially CFT in detail but during discussion you may also focus uh, the VBT and okay MOP as well so definitely students can aware about different theories of coordination compounds okay then just one minute so role of ligand in coordination compounds because you, okay, if you are knowing this okay spectrochemical series this uh, series playing very very important role to uh, uh, how these ligands affect the the different crystal field parameters and then and this application part of the coordination and the compound just okay you highlight okay, a few applications you know that okay chlorophyll and then hemoglobin there are so much of okay cis platin trans platin there are so many the coordination complexes so you highlight a few of them so this is regarding the the unit okay first chemistry of the transition okay the elements okay then uh, organic okay organometallic chemistry so i am somewhat weak in organometallic chemistry so i am not going to cover this also so, so okay uh, my colleague okay dr bange uh, he is somewhat expert in this so uh, faculty members uh, sorry for the same and if you have okay, the constant or the problem in organometallic chemistry, you may contact to Dr. Bhange, Bhange sir. Definitely, he will uh, solve your the constants. Then, uh, uh, unit number, okay, the third. Unit number third, okay, in that there are two subunits, uh, metal ligand, okay, uh, equilibria, and uh, metal ligand equilibria in solution. Second is, okay, transient metal carbon and related uh, the compounds. So, okay, I am highlighting okay, this one only. So, thermodynamic, so these are the points to be covered. Thermodynamic versus kinetic, okay, stability, then stability constant, stepwise, and overall stability constant. Then, trains, what is the train actually? What are the factors affecting this, the stability of the, the complexes with respect to metal ion and ligand, then chiliate effect? Now, how uh, uh, one can determine the, okay, the stability? So, basically, if you are going to uh, consider the the stability stability of uh, the compound it is very uh, the vast okay, concept because okay stability of the any compound okay depends upon many factors so if if, if there is complex and then you want to consider okay, the nature of metal ion nature of ligand then not only that okay in which solvent okay we are dissolving the same so means along with okay the nature of the complex this okay, again different spaces involved in the complex along along with that we want to consider also the external factors like solvent like temperature like pressure and there are so many okay things there are so many okay factors uh, which are 
okay usually considered to know the stability but uh instead of okay all okay different aspects we want to focus on okay the metal ion and ligand then okay what is thermodynamic stability thermodynamic stability means okay it is a measure of the bond strain between metal and ligand bond energy so thermodynamic okay stability which reveals about the measuring the bond energy bond strain if the bond strain between metal and ligand is stronger revealing that okay compound is thermo okay thermodynamically stable so okay, it is a measure of the bond energy or bond strain between metal and ligand and kinetic okay, stability how the okay, complex is to be transformed its rate of reaction so kinetic stability or reveals or which measures regarding the uh, the transformation of okay complex into the another species if uh, the transformation rate is faster revealing that uh, it is kinetically okay, uh, okay unstable unstable kinetically stable revealing that having uh, low rate of the transformation so thermodynamically thermodynamic stability one can use a okay, stable and unstable and kinetically one can use inert and labile complex kinetic case okay, stability means uh, in kinetic stability you know to reveal the stability of the complexes one can use inert complex and labile complex inert complex means the rate can okay, name itself will reverse that the transformation rate is very low or negligible and uh, <clears throat> kinetic okay, uh, means okay, labile complex this transformation rate is faster no doubt. so thermodynamic okay stability focuses on bond energy or bond strain and this focuses on the rate of okay, the transformation then stability constant this is also called as formation constant okay means okay if you are going to see the um, the complex ml complex how this complex is for the by com by combining metal plus ligand we are getting the okay metal ligand complex ml complex and then okay, we are getting the equilibrium constant equilibrium constant k is equal to concentration of product divided by concentration of the reactant reactant there are two reactants one k okay, one is metal and another is the ligand so the uh, stability constant it is also called as equilibrium constant for forming a ml complex using metal and ligand okay and reverse of the same it is called as instability constant reverse of the same means if okay, if you are going to see the complex if it undergoes dissociation we are getting the ml under those dissociation we are getting the metal plus the can so for this okay the reverse is called as okay dissociation constant so stability constant it is also called as formation constant and the reverse is called as instability or dissociation constant no doubt then uh, okay, there are like okay, two things here how the complex are to be formed so there are two things stably stepwise wise and overall stability constant with relations okay so there are two ways to form the complexes one is okay slowly okay step wise one can add the desired constraints so that okay one can reach the uh, desired composition of the complex or overall means let us see uh, okay let us see ml4 complex formation so there are two ways so uh, initially uh, you step wise uh, one can take the metal plus ligand while getting ml second ml plus another one okay mole of ligand ml2 in the third step we are getting ml3 in fourth we are getting ml4 so this is step wise and in overall so let us see if you want to follow ml4 okay so directly uh, one can take a metal plus four moles of ligand we are getting the ml4 complex and uh, so usually if you are going to see the relation beta n is equal to uh, k1 into k2 uh, into the k dot dot k n no dot so then again okay one can consider uh, this okay okay change in state voice stability constant uh, then uh, after that here we want to consider the the factors okay affecting the stability of metal complexes with reference to the ligands and metal so <clears throat> here in this uh, already i told Okay, you want to focus on the nature of metal and the nature of ligand to reveal the thermodynamic stability. So these are the factors related to the to know the thermodynamic stability. So in nature of metal ion, uh, you want to consider basically uh, the uh, the, uh, the charge. 
the charge on metal ion then the acidity of metal ion then the size of metal ion then ion of hydration so these are the sub factors or cfsc value or whether the uh, if you're going to see uh, use okay if you're going to use the concept of uh, hard okay uh, hard and soft acids and bases okay so all these okay sub factors are to be uh, the covered under nature of metal ion and in uh, the ligand uh, one can consider about the uh, the negative charge or basicity or one can consider okay whether the uh, complex okay or whether the ligand is forming chelate okay uh, the complex or not means usually chelate complex are more stable than non chelate then in chelate also means always to okay, told okay chelate complex are more stable than non chelate means if you are going to see uh, bidentate ligand in form okay in a condition compound so it forms the usually the, okay, the chelate uh, the ring uh, such chelate uh, complex is stable than non chelate you see there is a amine as the, the ligand okay and then in this also uh, okay, chelate versus non chelate then uh, one also consider the number of uh, the chelate ring involved uh, given number of chelate rings in a complex and third important thing is that how many number of atoms involved in the chelate ring so okay if uh, if the ligand is um, saturated one saturated one by identity and a saturated one then at that time usually five membered ring is okay more stable five member because of less okay uh, the strain but if ligand is unsaturated so at that time six member ring is more stable because of delocalization so in chelate effect you want to consider chelate versus non chelate the second thing number of uh, the chelate rings involved and the third is that third important is that the uh, number of atoms involved in the chelate ring so along with that again okay, one can also focus on the okay steric hindrance okay steric hindrance so that also affect the the uh, the bond strength or bond energy in a complex then uh, okay after that uh, we want to focus on okay the stability uh, constant determination through different methods so especially uh, in your syllabus th these two methods uh, have been included one is spectrophotometric method and second one is okay ph metric method so okay in spectrophotometric method one can use like a job and like a mole like a slope ratio method okay means for uh, preparing different types of composition one can use either job and mole or slope ratio so with the help of the the same one can uh, uh, one can obtain the stability concept not only that the composition of the metal and the okay the ligand and then second is okay the jerome ph metric method so in this uh, the optical okay density or absorbance of the different case okay, uh, solution uh, solutions they okay, used to be measured and uh, we want to follow certain calculations so at then we are getting the stability constant and in this ph metric method okay one can measure the the ph so one can may make the, the different sets uh, one can consider uh, for metal another for metal plus ligand and third for the, the blanks uh, okay, set for these different okay, sets, one can measure the pH with respect to the volume of the titan added or volume of uh, the, the solution added. And okay, once we measure the pH, then we, okay, we want to plot a graph of pH versus uh, the volume of the titan added. And from that, uh, we, okay, we want to also follow the certain calculations, and that okay, from that, one can reach to the the stability concept so through this the student can uh, uh, getting the information about about the stability constant so especially thermodynamic stability constant then student can understand okay how the chelate effect affect the, the stability of the metal complexes and okay how okay what are the methods which are available to evaluate the the stability constant okay what are then uh, okay so here next is that uh, unit number four already i told this is a very important topic okay uh, those who are 
means uh, especially as we know that uh, students uh, may be interested for the uh, the research after completion of MSc. So for the okay for these students, uh, this topic is very important. And uh, so under this topic, okay, these are the points to be covered. So introduction of nano science and nanotechnology, then historical background. So you know that okay means want to uh, cover about the basic uh, the terminologies of nano science and technology. Nano science means uh, the science which deals with the nano the materials nano materials means the materials having uh, the dimension in between 1 to 100 nanometer okay and technology so whatever the okay technology which is based upon the nano materials called as nanotechnology and then historical background if you are going to see the history of this circuit uh, science so you know that uh, <coughs> uh, the okay richard Feynman he is called as the father of nano science. Why he is called as father of nano science? Because in this uh, uh, world, Richard Feynman uh, first time uh, introduced uh, the uh, okay, introduced about the uh, nano science and technology through his uh, uh, the talk entitled "There is plenty of room at the bottom." And uh, Richard Feynman in 1959. Uh, he delivered the, uh, the the talk on the topic there is plenty of room at the bottom so at that time okay there was a annual meeting of American physical society and in that meeting he was uh, the uh, the the chief guest and in that uh, nano science not all so in his arc he uh, pointed out uh, does it possible to tune the materials at the very very small so uh, because of that uh, scientists uh, Uh, called as the father of nano science. Then, uh, so uh, it okay, that lecture was held at the Cali California of Technology. And uh, later on, okay, uh, in 1974, uh, this a okay, few uh, scientists claiming claiming that the uh, the term nanotechnology was first time used by scientist uh, Nario Tanikuchi. So after Richard Feynman, uh, few scientists claiming that the word nanotechnology was coined by uh, first time by uh, Ario Taniguchi and then but uh, though <coughs> it was uh, I miss uh, nanotechnology uh, that word coined by Taniguchi but it was not widely known to most of the uh, uh, the the inventors or investigators uh, but okay in 1986 uh, with in, okay, inspiration from Richard Feynman, uh, the uh, the scientist uh, K. Drexler, K. Drexler, uh, who used the uh, the term nanotechnology uh, in his book entitled "Engines of Creation: The Coming Era of Nanotechnology." So, if you are going to see okay the historical background in this, we want to cover about okay the about Richard Feynman. Then who uh, coined the word nanotechnology? Few are disclaiming that Tani Kuchi is the scientist who claimed, but uh, it was not widely published. But few are also claiming that uh, the word nanotechnology first time coined by the Tesla. So there is debate in that. But okay, uh, in okay in 1980s, there was really breakthrough. Okay, to this uh, nano science and technology with invention of with invention of Scanning probe microscope. The first work for a microscope that is scanning tunneling microscope. So it was discovered in uh, sorry, it was invented in uh, 1981 uh, by scientists okay, Binning and Rohori at uh, IBM uh, laboratory. And uh, so initially, I miss okay, in 1980s, mm, uh, there were two major okay breakthroughs. 
for this uh, nano science and technology first breakthrough is that invention of scanning okay probe microscope first is that scanning turning microscope it was invented in 1981 and uh, with small modification they also uh, uh, invented atomic force microscope microscope okay and uh, it was invented in 1986 and for the okay this uh, uh, big this okay the invention uh, the Binig, okay, uh, Rory, et al. They got the Nobel Prize uh, in, uh, uh, in 1986. 1986. Okay. Uh, and another okay, breakthrough is that the invention of the C60. So C60 is one of the allotrope of the carbon. So traditional allotropes, you are knowing that the uh, uh, graphite and uh, diamond, these are the two, uh, the, the classical allotropes of the carbon. But uh, uh, Harald Kruto, under whom I uh, I completed my postdoc, who uh, discovered the C60. No doubt. So uh, C60 okay uh, means uh, the invention of uh, C60 or discovery of uh, C60 uh, is the real start for uh, the, the synthesized okay material and uh, synthesized nanomaterials. Why? Because uh, though uh, in 1986 uh, scientist Harald Kruto discovered C60, but uh, with the inspiration uh, from the Harald Kruto, uh, the scientist Izima, Izima, uh, scientist Izima uh, was interested to synthesize the this okay the C60. But okay during okay uh, that synthesis, he observed that though though we are getting the C60, but along with C60 uh, there are okay different tubes. Are observed in the in that okay C60 material. So he uh, separated all these uh, the tubes and then he realized that is through different investigation he realized that whatever the tubes these are okay carbon nano tubes. So carbon nano tubes is the first okay commercial uh, nano metal synthesized by the scientist Izima. So okay in historical background. Means we want to cover all these uh, about Richard Feynman, then uh, uh, Tani Gucci, then Drexler, then uh, invention of uh, STM and AFM, then Harald Proto, and then okay, uh, in 1981, the first commercial uh, synthesized or practically synthesized metal is the, the carbon nanotube. So, if just okay, if you are going to see uh, okay, the, uh, the period. Uh, though in 1959 the talk was okay totally to, at that time the talk was totally okay imaginary talk about the nanometals but okay more than 30 years uh, have been uh, spent by the different uh, investigators so as to uh, get the first uh, synthesized um, okay, nanometal so all these aspects are to be covered in this one in classification of nat nanometals there is okay you know that uh, based on the okay, different uh, the dimensions, the nanometals are to be classified as 1D, 2D, and 3D with their examples. So there is also need to add 0D, zero dimension. It's almost okay. Those are okay spherical nanoparticles or quantum dots or nano dots. All these are zero dimension. Okay, these are very small dimension. 1D revealing that uh, okay, if uh, if you are going to see the uh, nano wire nano rods nano tubes all these are 1d so now okay multi wall cnts single wall cnts carbon nano tubes these are a key okay 1d 2d so okay this is in seed form means in vapor form in thin film form so okay uh, this okay graphene uh, or graphene oxide sheet so all these are okay 2d and 3d okay uh, uh, this is okay old or classical objects Okay, flow follow follow in C60 is the best example of 3D. So uh, okay, zero D revealing that all okay this uh, the dimensions uh, below okay uh, ten, uh, 10 nanometer. One D out of three, uh, one dimension is out of okay the the system. Means it is okay elongated along one directions. Here out of three. It is elongated along two directions, but there is a restriction along the one dimension. In this, 
there is a key elongation in 3D visions, 3D dimensions. So that's why they, it is called as 3D. Then the okay, applications of okay, uh, nano technology and nanometals. Uh, as we know that these nanometals are the ubiquitous uh, materials, uh, revealing that uh, these materials have been used in uh, every okay, every field. Either okay, energy technologies, environmental sports, catalytic, biomedical. If you are putting okay, simply applications of uh, nanotechnology or nanometals in the Google, you will be getting a okay, okay, number of okay, the windows. So it is a okay, very vast okay, field in terms of application. Then okay, the implications is also one of the major aspects we want to also focus in the future fantasy and nanotechnology and then what are the future outlooks so that is also very important though it is a okay, boon to the human being but still okay there are certain okay the constraints all these okay are to be uh, are to be considered in implications and the future fantasy uh, and nanotechnology then uh, experimental methods for uh, preparation of nanometals here in this we want to focus about uh, the okay the chemical method especially because chemical methods have the overriding advantages okay means with the help of simple labwares and at low temperature one can synthesize the desired the the nanometals and uh, definitely uh, I I know that a uh, few of the uh, the faculty members of Ashoka uh, Chavani Institute of Science they are aware about uh, how to synthesize uh, the different okay, nanometals, so whether metallic nanoparticles or oxide nanoparticles, and okay, composite. So especially in this, okay, one can focus upon chemical reduction method. So basically, useful for making the metal nanoparticles, or one can use okay different uh, method like okay sol gel, hydrothermal, solothermal. There are so many methods available, but okay, at least uh, three to four uh, methods are to be covered under this one. Then. Uh, the chemical and physical the size dependent properties so here okay this is very important one size dependent so only change is the size so if i'm going to see okay the silicon rod and if i'm if i'm putting silicon rod uh, in uh, in a ball milling so definitely if there is micro rod after putting in a ball milling i am getting the okay, micro particles having black in color but again if you, if i'm using again okay grinding of the same then I am at the end. I am getting the yellow in color. Yellow in color. When okay, I am getting yellow yellow in color for silicon. Uh, when okay, uh, the, the the dimensions within one to hundred nanometer. So this size dependent properties. So this is one example. Another example is that okay, we are aware about the gold. Okay, so he okay, in in this okay today's. Uh, meeting in this okay program uh, there are okay lady participants as well so they are okay uh, most of the times they are using okay gold ornaments and they know the color the the color of the bulk gold is golden yellow in color but okay uh, though it is uh, precious material it is commonly used for making ornaments but uh, nowadays you know that Mm, as a chemist, it is very silly material. It is not used as a, the catalyst. It's catalyst. But means bulk gold. So definitely, okay, the bulk gold uh, okay, is used for making ornaments or if you want to buy any car or if you want to make a home, the bankers, okay, Bank manager will give you loan based on how much amount of bulk gold you have. Okay, so bulk gold having different okay the the, the uses. But uh, if I have okay bulk gold and if I if I want to use the catalyst, uh, it is not a good, good catalyst. It is very silly metal for catalytic transformation. So for that okay, if I'm tuning the go okay bulk gold into the nano gold, nano gold. So nano gold. Having different colors, okay, crimson red color, violet color, like that, different color, depending upon the size. And uh, what do that? Okay, nano gold is to be used for different types of the catalytic, okay, the transformation. If for conversion of CO, 
to CO2 means oxidation reaction. One can use the cold nanogold catalyst. For conversion of reduction reaction means nitro uh, compound to the amine compound, one can use the the nano okay gold catalyst. Okay. So okay, means these are the few okay points or few examples you want to cover or you want to uh, cover under size dependent properties. And uh, if there is change in okay uh, uh, the dimensions, especially uh, size, then okay, it will okay, impact on catalytic properties. It will, okay, it will impact on uh, the electrical properties, magnetic properties, then means uh, optical properties. Optical means color chemistry. Then electrical properties means okay about heat and electricity. Electricity. Then magnetic properties, magnetism. So if you tune the okay the size, okay it will impact on all these different properties. Okay, so at least one or two examples are to be given uh, under each okay the the property under each property. Okay, then characterization techniques of nanometals. So basically, uh, XRD uh, same team. So XRD is willing about the uh, the structural the properties and same and team. Okay, these are the most important techniques. So with the help of the same. One can easily recognize whether the particles in nano form or the bulk okay, dimensions. So same scanning electron microscope and same transmission electron microscope. So you want to cover principle, instrumentation, and application. In principle, in same here, in same and same, revealing that the primary uh, source is the electron beam. In same, basically, in this uh, back scattered electron is used for forming image. So in same okay the most important thing is that backscatter of secondary electron uh, beam which is produced after electron interaction with the sample is used for forming the image but here okay, in same we are getting the, uh, the okay, especially uh, one can uh, reveal the uh, the particle size up to uh, 10 nanometer but uh, okay if you have this FECM field emission one can reach up to the the two nanometer and uh, you are very kind uh, okay lucky that you have the same in your institute so okay uh, it is one of the uh, proud okay moment to all of you okay because the same is very costlier one okay so if possible in your okay, regular okay, co curriculum uh, you may also give the demo of the same then tame okay uh, uh, again, a okay, transmission electron microscopy revealing that here a okay, transmitted electron beam is used for forming image. And uh, okay, here, if uh, if want to recognize the uh, the particle size below two two nanometer or okay uh, less than one nanometer, one can use the tape. So same uh, ten nanometer or okay with a fee same field emission, one can reach up to two nanometer. But here below that, one can use also tape so with this okay uh, the unit we are knowing all these okay this, okay student okay must know about the basic terminology about nano science and technology then they are getting information about applications of nanotechnology then what are the tools available to characterize the nanometals what are the properties then what are the methods and how okay uh, what are the different okay nanometals as well okay so this is regarding okay nano science and okay, nanometals so physical chemistry already i told okay i am not okay uh, much expert in this one so i am okay skipping the okay, physical part uh, thermodynamics and all these okay uh, for that okay you may contact to uh, the expert working at uh, reputed universities okay uh, then okay, just again uh, regarding okay, uh, the practical part. In practical part, you know that just I am highlighting few things. I am not okay, going in details about the same. Uh, regarding okay, uh, learning objects in practical, uh, you want to focus on the ore analysis, then alloy analysis, then okay, preparation of complexes, then instrumental techniques. So all these okay. So in this here. Uh, regarding or uh, if you are going to see your the syllabus the ore analysis uh, two ores uh, have been included in your syllabus one is uh, pyrolocyte ore and second is hematite ore and in alloy soldier and model metal alloy okay so here okay in okay you know that ore ore is naturally occurring uh, mineral from which metal 
or metals extracted economically or cheaply. So pyrolusite is the ore from which uh, one can extract the manganese. So basically, okay, for okay, this pyrolusite ore uh, is here. You want to estimate the amount of silica and mang manganese present in this one. So for that, first important step is opening of the ore. You want to open the ore properly, and for that, you want to take the desired amount of uh, the ore in the in the okay, conical flask, uh, and then you want to add the aquaresia. Aquaresia means it is mixture of acids, HCl plus H O three. And then uh, okay, you want to uh, okay, around ten ml one can add aquaresia. And for that, okay, one can for making 10 ml aquaresia, one can take okay, 6 to 7 ml SCL plus 3 ml HL. Okay, so come push this 3 as to 1. And then uh, you know that uh, you want to heat uh, the same to the nearly dryness. You want to repeat the same for 2 3 times so that there is proper opening. And then at the end, okay, one can uh, add the hot water or one can add the water and the, heat this, okay, the same. And then, okay, through okay the filtration, one can uh, separate out the silica gravimetrically. So, uh, and one can determine the silica gravimetrically. And the manganese, okay, so that manganese okay is to be determined by the by a okay, whole lot of okay methods. So, for that, uh, one can use uh, the uh, the KNO4 uh, the solution. Not so manganese, okay, which is to be oxidized. And uh, per okay, this one per manganate it is to be reduced, but in this also during this uh, manganese estimation by whole lot of methods, one can use zinc oxide powder. Okay, this acts as a uh, this makes the, the emulsion. And uh, because uh, when we add uh, initially, what happens uh, in this okay, Mn is in MnSO4 and. Uh, when okay, we are titrating against KNO4, then for every addition of uh, the KNO4, the manganese okay, MnSO4 make known to MnO2 and uh, having brown and dark precipitate. So, you know, to settle the, uh, the papity at the bottom uh, uh, easily, one can use the zinc oxide powder. Okay, so uh, this is regarding ore analysis. Then, uh, um, okay, uh, in MSC, uh, okay, though most of the times okay, we are giving the procedure, but uh, okay, uh, regarding the preparation of chemical, uh, okay, try to uh, convince okay to the student to make the solution at their own level, because okay, because most of the times they are aware about the the theoretical preparations, normality, molarity, all this. Okay, but okay, uh, if you are directly giving okay one normal KNO solution. Okay, uh, so though they are aware about uh, the theoretical de definition, and if you are giving one normal solution, so definitely they are not okay going to reveal how the uh, <coughs> the okay normal uh, one normal chemical solution okay, is to be okay uh, is to be prepared. So most of the times, I, I, if I am asking. Uh, the student definition of the uh, the normality and molarity definitely they are aware. But if I am telling, tell me normality of water or molarity of water which we are drinking, so they are not knowing. Oh, sir, we don't know. Some someone is telling away. Oh, hey. My experience is that most of the time, okay, so okay, most of the students are telling like that. Oh, one normal, hundred normal, normal. But normality of okay drinking water, normal or molarity of uh, drinking water, okay, okay, it is around fifty five point five. Okay, 55.5. Then how it okay, it comes? So there are okay, various okay, simple calculations. So uh, at least okay in uh, first okay means first week of uh, the uh, the practical, uh, the student can know about all these okay preparation of chemicals. So now how one can prepare normal solution, molar solution for solid substances, for salts, for liquids. Then uh, okay my uh, okay uh, uh, the experiences regarding. If I am asking, oh, tell me uh, normality or molarity of concentrated HCl. Concentrated HCl, because from L1 standard onwards, most of the times okay, we are okay playing with the different types of acids, okay, or different types of solvent. But okay, though 
we are okay seeing okay we are using commercial bottles but we are no, not knowing how to evaluate the normality or molality of different acids or this different solvent okay so uh, <clears throat> for that okay uh, the teachers okay may uh, uh, train the the students about the uh, making the solutions okay then uh, regarding uh, here uh, second experiment hematite ore you know that this hematite uh, is basically known for the iron the extraction and here in this also okay initially want to take the ore then you want to use acid scl sometimes one can also add the hno3 in that and we have to open the properly so okay in this also silica is to be separated initially then one can go for the iron and iron okay used to be uh, uh, uh estimated either by external indicator or internal indicator internal indicator okay so for external indicator one can use k3fe6 and internal indicator one can use diphenyl amine indicator so here uh means same like okay, in case of alloy alloy is a okay, homogeneous mixture of two or more okay, metal the shoulder tin and lead so okay one okay through different okay treatments one to separate out one and uh, okay, another okay would be the solution uh, no doubt the same in case of mineral metal also copper and okay uh, the nickel so mineral metal in this okay uh, one can use acid mixture uh, for making the solution of uh, the mineral metal then uh, okay once okay the, okay there is conversion of mineral metal into the solution for then pass the h2o gas then definitely the in that okay the copper is to be converted as copper sulfide one can uh, okay filter the same and these are the ppt of the copper sulfide in scl so we are getting the copper okay in uh, solution form same here in the filter there is the nickel and one can use dmg so there is formation of ni dmg so this copper is to be determined like either edt or idiometric titration and this one for uh, using uh, the uh, complex metric means precipitation the uh, okay uh, between nickel and the dmc and for uh, this okay preparation and purity uh, out of this one four six one can cover at least uh, okay the six one and for that uh, okay the uh, one of the excellent book is that uh, chemistry okay, sorry experimental inorganic or physical chemistry by ma malti so in this uh, book all these okay uh, not only okay only these okay six there are so many uh, more than okay thousands of uh, the preparations have been given uh, in the book published by the ma malti so these are the okay this okay palmer is also an important book for uh, the uh, the preparation then okay uh, this ogel ogel is also very excellent okay uh, then in physical okay this potentiometry then uh, the conductometry okay spectrophotometry so just okay before uh, actual experiment the student can aware about the theoretic classification of all these potentiometry conductometry spectrophotometry and so on so because you know that uh, if you are going to see potentiometry, potentiometry is one of the electrochemical method in which a desired metal electrode uh, and deep into the in its aqueous solution. And uh, once okay, we are diffing the metal electrode into its aqueous solution, then we are measuring its okay potential, okay, using the Noah's equation. But uh, usually, with the help of the single okay half cell, we are not going to measure the any type of potential. For that, we are going to use the okay two half cells. Then and then one can measure the uh, the the okay the okay the potential and uh, so okay okay so one can use reference electrode one can use indicator electrode so there are different types of reference electrode like st standard hydrogen glass electrode calomel electrode the silver silver halide electrode or if you are going to for glass electrode it is indicator electrode so glass electrode is simply uh, the okay, AZ AZ cell with 0.1 molar SCL but uh, if i want to see you uh, the ph meter ph meter in ph meter okay we are usually using the combined glass electrode combined glass electrode it is not a simply 
glass electrode. It is combined glass electrode. So it is a combination of two electrodes. One is canomel electrode, another is the, the gas electrode. And canomel electrode means simply whatever the metal wire which is coated with AZ to Cl2 and which is dipped into the KCl solution and as well as the mercury, the pool. No doubt. So metal wire coated with Hg2Cl2, KCl dipped into the Hg okay, pool. So that is uh, the, okay, the calomel and glass electrode. It is okay. We know that okay, Az, AgCl with 0.1 molar the KCl. So okay, this is regarding okay, the pH metric and okay, you know that uh, <coughs> Uh, okay, or potentiometry and then uh, in conductometry basically uh, with the help of this one can uh, measure the cond okay the conductance okay so so okay before that the student can aware about the basics of the conductometer the same in case of the spectrophotometer means bs lamas law and then the unit of uh, the uh, the optical density or absorbance all these so then and then okay one can go for directly for the, the okay, okay, experiments so okay regarding all these refractometer and polarimetry chemical kinetics partial of okay, molar volumes and all these so these are the reference books and the uh, these are included in your syllabus okay so student okay can uh, uh, if you're going to see the outcomes the students should understand a variety of instrumental techniques then students should know about okay spectrophotometric experience and students should learn about the chemical kinetics and the reactions this is regarding uh, outcomes for the inorganic experiments thank you so much for your kind attention thank you sir one nice uh, explanation of uh, you know chemistry uh, now the session is open for discussion um, uh, power madam mostly bharat madam kai uh, question asil tar ami yes, yamashi question welcome ha bharat madam kai question ait ka Practical 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 expected technique MSc one regarding practicals hello sir hello uh, okay already uh, in your syllabus you introduce about okay, nano science and technology uh -huh. So you can add the uh, experiments related to the synthesis of the nanomaterials and their uh, the characterization. So in our MSc course uh, at Shivaji University, we have introduced the experiments uh, related to the nano science and technology. The synthesis of silver nanoparticle by chemical reduction method, like that. And we have characterized the same. Uh, we are using uh, using uh, optical. Uh, yeah, visible spectroscopy for characterizing the synthesized silver nanoparticles. So you may include. So in addition, hello, sir. Hi, sir. Ah, in addition, okay, uh, 
within one hour, okay one hour one and a half hour it is not like a okay, it is a challenging task almost all the uh, the uh, I mean, points of representative topics of inorganic chemistry or the practicals uh, during uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the teaching if the faculty members are okay, facing any concern okay they may directly contact to me okay yes sir yes sir sure and if okay again i, I am facing problem definitely i will go through the uh, different uh, reference articles and i will try to uh, resolve their concerns uh, definitely Sound, madam, kai question? Kya kai? Well, I was it me, Dumsa. Sound and how was it not a room, sir? Ah, madam, 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 sound, madam, sir, how was it, madam? My, it was. Madam, madam, physical chemistry is a practical method. Mostly, I play a Dumar madam. Take it out. And like I play a game, they think of key. Mostly, instrumentation is practical upon the money in food. Oh, okay. I had the Japan polarography book the gate name. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, hello, sir. Sir, uh, uh, sir. Yeah, physical checks from Hello, uh, sir. The syllabus is not a ticket. Stability constant determination. I have a lot of syllabus. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. If you are going to see the, uh, the experiment. Which is included under a spectrophotometry to study the kinetics of ionization of acetone spectrophotometrically. So, along with that, if you are uh, conducting one or two experiments related to the uh, stability determination, stability constant determination, so okay, this is also very fine because already in your syllabus you included about all these metal ligand equilibria. So, there is also a okay, method. Hello. 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 अच्छा pure inorganic या pure physical project देना सर का एकादा का guidance तुम चकड़े आएगा। I mean उस तो क्यों आ सका है? जैसा तो तुम्हें साइड लकी stability constant तुम्हें काटो शक्ता। हाँ। छोटे-छोटे project जो मुलायम independently करो शक्ति। क्योंकि और थोड़ा-थोड़ा क्या संख्या लगता है? Hello madam, hello। हाँ बोला सर। Yeah at the end Experimental inorganic oblique physical chemistry. I book at the excellent. I get out of Tamade, but it me as though exam camera day. Exam initial levels are with that. एकदम बस समझा है रिसर्च में यार तीसरे साले का जो है एक्सपर्ट या है क्या अच्छा साड़ी होती है सांगलो बुका जे आप तुम भरे जब लाओ मतलब आने का क्या कुछ जी पोस्टर वगैरह लड़ी डिफाइन के लिए है 
तशा प्रकार प्रोसिजर अपन अपन इतर ठिकाणी का यूज करू शको इतर एम एस सी से लहना प्रोजेक्ट सा थोड़ा कस है बेसिक लिजो बेसिक लर्नर है बुक चांगला है कि एडवांस है चांगला है शेवटी प्रोजेक्ट मध्य मैडम कस है कि विद्या शेवटी सहभाग कि है फार महत्व है कारण आता विद्या संख्या सर बगितर फार एका एका गाइड ते एका टीचर कड़े एक दा दा विद्या तरी शिक्रीज हो लक्ष्य देव शको सर्टन एक्सटेन्ट इनऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री अतिशय चांगल्यूम है ऑनलाइन अवेलेबल है चारशे रुपया एक वॉल्यूम चारशे पांचे रुपया इनऑर्गेनिक ऑलमोस्ट जे पॉइंट सिलेबस चार मैक्रोफोन म्यूट करा तुम मैडम मैक्रोफोन एक मिनट फिर बैग एक्म डिपार्टमेंट एक दिन मिनट तुम आवाज जास्त हाँ ओके सर बगतो आम्मी दो पुस्तक थैंक यू वेरी मच सर फॉर युअर वैल्युएबल गाइडन्स रिगार्डिंग दिलेबस डेफिनेटली इट विल बी हेल्पफुल फॉर अस नाउ आई रिक्वेस्ट टू मिस टी वी पॉवर मैम टू एक्सप्रेस वोट ऑफ थैंक्स थैंक यू वगमोले मैडम मे ऑडिबल ओके गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल इट गिव मी एन इनमिज प्लेजर टू डिलिवर द वोट ऑफ थैंक्स फॉर दिस सेशन माय हार्ट फील्स विथ लॉट्स ऑफ ग्रैटिट्यूड एंड रिस्पेक्ट फॉर अवर डिस्टिंग्विश स्पीकर प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर एस डी डेलकर सर Uh, for not only sparing uh, your valuable time with your commendable uh, talk on the uh, msc subject uh, in organic chemistry and physical chemistry and also coordination chemistry in dp okay. thank all of you for clearing our concept and uh, enhancing our uh, understanding i would like to thank uh, principal dr bt jadhav sir 
बिओस चेयरमन डॉक्टर व्ही व्ही सावंत मॅम हेड ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट मिस्टर पी व्ही दिसेस सर एम एस सी कॉर्डिनेटर डॉक्टर पी व्ही चव्हाण सर अँड एस बी डॉक्टर एस बी कांबळे सर अँड ऑर्गनायझिंग कमिटी आय वुड ऑल्सो लाईक टू थँक्स ऑल टीचिंग फॅकल्टी फॉर अटेंडिंग अँड टेकिंग पार्ट इन द एफ डी पी प्रोग्रॅम सो थँक यू अगेन ऑल ऑफ यू थँक यू सर थँक यू सो मच मॅडम थँक यू सो मच बाय बाय सी यू first session is over here next session will be start at sharp 3 pm sir link zara adhi shuru karun dya thewa purcha session chi pawne 3 la ho ho okay Thank you.